Hello. Hello. Welcome to Quarantine Cooking <laughs> with Tara Ward. Cheers. Love you. Love you too. Here we go. Right. Hey, what are you cooking? I'm going to make bolognese. Talk us cooking. through your ingredients. So, butter, my favourite ingredient. Yeah. Olive oil, salt yes. and pepper, couple of onions. Yeah. Garlics. Yeah. Nice 5% fat mint. Tomato puree. Yeah. Little stock cube, uh, oregano mixed yeah. herbs. Plum tomatoes rather than chopped tin tomatoes. It's secret little ingredients. I always put Marmite. So Marmite gives good depth of flavour to gravies, uh, does exactly the same to bolognese, chilli, etc. It has an umami flavour. Okay. That's my tip. And then some mustard and a stock cube. Yeah, Ready? and some soy sauce there. Oh yeah, sorry, for saltiness. Okay. So we're going to chop up our onions. Yeah. First, so you need a nice sharp knife. Cut your onions in half. Tip for the onions. Don't cut off the hairy end. That's the bit that usually will make you cry more. So when you've cut it in half, leave it on like that. Peel the skin off. Yeah. So what we're doing is while keeping the bottom in tack, we've now cut. Yes? Yeah. One cut that way. Cut, cut, cut. You don't need to be too particular about this, but I do always like to have quite a fine dice on my onion. Oh, fine, a fine dice. So they've been cut that way. Yeah. But they're all together at the bottom. No tears so far. For those that don't know, rocking motion, knife like this. Can you yeah. see it? Yeah, 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 I can see it. Knife like that, through the onion and up again. So the top of the tip of the onion, at uh, the tip of the knife, sorry, doesn't leave the board. When you get to that, if it's all gone a bit hairy, just turn it on its butt. You want oh, as much... Oh. Um, Hello, quarantine day 10. <laughs> <laughs> you want as much sturdiness the as The love lockdown. You Show get it. down to about that. You get a flash over here. So Oops. we're going to now go to the pan. So we're very lucky. We've got Mama's old Le Creuset. Yeah. That's quite clean still, as you can see, but very good. Non-stick still there. It's probably better to try and use a cast iron pan for things like bolognese. You don't need to put it in the oven. We're going to cook it all on top. Some people do. So totally your preference so butter yeah just a little bit <laughs> into the pan into your pan and with the butter always always do a glug of oil so olive oil sunflower oil whatever you want don't use extra virgin ever mm, when you're no, doing cooking no virgins um the oil will help for the butter to not burn um, which is what you want. That's gone on a low heat. On a low heat. Medium heat. So just push your onions to the side. We're now going to deal with the garlic while we wait. Yeah. We are going to be adding these separately. Okay. Onions first, sweat them down nicely, get them nice and sweet and tender. Yeah. Garlic next. Because of the sugar content in garlic, it will um, catch much quicker than an onion will. How to deal with the garlic. Cut your end of your garlic off. Some of the skin may come with it. Not the pointy end, but the like root end, so opposite to what we did with the onion. And then with the back of your knife, push down. That will then release your garlic. So with a little ease, there we go, that's peeled. So because we cut the end off the garlic, they popped out a lot easier. People who just bash garlic, like it doesn't work as well, you still have to peel it. So always take the root off first. What we're then gonna do, so we're going to put a little bit of salt on there. Garlic, I feel, should always be like this, what I'm going to do. Yeah. If you just chop, 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 it doesn't sweat like an onion. It doesn't have a high enough water content. I would always do my garlic like this. So you add a bit of um, salt on top of it. You then do the, you know, normal rocking motion that lots of people do at home. So then when it looks a bit like that, starting to basically release a bit of its, uh, a bit of the liquid. That is the abrasion motion and the salt drawing the liquid out of the garlic. There you so go. once we get at that, we're then going to do this. The salt is going to be used as a sort of, as a crusher. Yeah. It's just quite a fun way of doing it and also if you don't have a garlic crusher you can still get yummy pureed garlic quite easily. I think it releases more flavour. Okay, so that's what we're sort of looking for. That's then fine. So we've got three, uh, three cloves of garlic ready to go there. So I can hear that the butter is bubbling away. 
Oh, I can smell the butter. So in with our onion. No garlic. No garlic. Leave the garlic on your board. But yeah. be prepped. Yeah. Put some onion in there. Yeah. Then we're just going to put this back on. Uh, on a low heat still? Still on a low heat. We're just coating, coating the onion moving it around a bit. The butter did catch slightly. Yeah. You're still getting that nice colour. Yeah. Colour is flavour. Butter is flavour. Look at that. So with our meat, what we might do, which I sometimes do, I sometimes don't, it's very much how one feels, is season up your meat. So with the dried herbs. What herbs have you got? So I've just got mixed herbs. Yeah which is marjoram, thyme, oregano, parsley, sage, basil. I'm gonna put a bit more oregano on the beef. And also season, nice bit of salt, and some cracked pepper. Happy. And a little swill of wine. Do you want to ask me a question? Not really, no. <laughs> So I think we're ready for garlic now. Slightly golden, nice and soft, so then we... In with the... Pop in our garlic. Yeah. Get that nicely mixed in. The smell is delish. One of the best smells. So once it's sort of stirred in, you can really, you can carry on with the process. The garlic really doesn't need that long. And as I said, you really don't want it to burn because that can ruin the flavour. And then... So you haven't mixed the mince with everything, you've just seasoned on top? Just seasoned on top. Yeah. So I'm going to do half first. You weren't okay. though, were you? I was. I said it because I said that. It's a teamwork thing, this bubble. So what I do do is just slightly smash it, but don't stir it, because what you're doing is sealing the beef. So you want it to get a little bit gnarly. You want it to get a little bit burned. Not burned, that's wrong. Brown. You want it to get a little bit brown. You want it to not be pink like this. We're going to cook it for a really long time anyway. How long? We're going to cook it for like a couple of hours at least. So I feel with cooking sometimes it is about, it's about watching, smelling, looking, looking to see what's happening. I can see that my onion is now nice and golden on the side. Um, but I can also hear that the heat is potentially a little bit low now. The beef is starting, I can see the liquid coming out of it. The liquid is starting to come out of the meat. This is also where you want to have like slightly, I don't know what the word is, but better quality meat won't produce as much liquid. You can see that it's starting to get brown. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. So now we can just mix it in. With, the, with all, the, all of it? It doesn't matter, yeah. It doesn't matter if all of it isn't browned. So now push all that back to the side. And then the rest of the meat. Yeah, push all that back to the side. I'm going to turn my heat up a bit. Because I just... There's a bit... Which way do you want? We've got a... Again, this is another element of when you're sweating your onions. Also, don't rush this browning stage. Just. Push it all down, give it a little separate. It will all, once, because we're gonna cook it for so long, once you start that process, it will break away anyway. So just let it do its thing. Let that excess water bubble out. Let the fat get all yummy and melted. Let it get a bit brown on the bottom. Just sort of leave it. Sorry, I got- Oh Christ. <laughs> I got a bit hot. So, so I've now put an apron on. Good. Put my name on it. Very good. So basically the meat is all brown. Oh, really? It's all cooked. There is still a bit of liquid in here, but that's absolutely fine. So now we're going to slosh in some vino. About that much, which is probably a large glass, I would say, in oh, our that's household. A, that's a very small glass, that. Eh? No, that's a large glass. Oh, was it? So, yeah. Everyone probably would have heard the phrase deglazing. Basically, wine, whenever you add it into a, into a a dish, you're effectively, you do it on high heat to burn off that harsh sort of alcohol taste. Um, no. But you also, it's really good so to add that So if you like the alcohol taste, no, don't. Just, just drink it. <laughs> don't put it in your food, just drink it. So we're using that to sort of get all those gnarly little bits off the bottom, off the side of the pan, 
So use that extra, that little bit of liquid just to really scrape away. So we get all that flavor from the cooking. I'm gonna turn the heat down again. So if you give us a smell, you can smell the wine <clears throat> and you wanna sort of almost cook it just until you can't really anymore, but until it's almost absorbed into the meat. Mm. But again, a little bit of liquid's absolutely fine. Mm. So at this point, we're now gonna add our, our flavor makers. So we're blipping away, we're having a nice time. We're gonna put a, quite a large tablespoon of puree in. So a little teaspoon, I would say, of uh, mustard. What's that, a teaspoon? That's a teaspoon. Teas and why do you put marmite in it? I said earlier, the yeah, umami but... flavor. Yeah. Umami is a flavor that no one can really describe. It's it's the real savory, salty flavor that Marmite has. And okay, then, then we're sauce. also gonna do a little bit of soy sauce. But this would normally be... This would usually be Liam Perrin's, I would say, better. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Now I'm gonna get all that in here. That looks delish. A great woman told me once that uh, a bolognese is actually a tomato sauce with meat in it, not <sighs> a meat-based sauce. So you can also see that the marmite does give a really lovely dark colour. Oh. I'm a bit hot. Mm. Let the viewers be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> so in with our tin of tomatoes, we're going to just smash them up, give them a little helping hand. Don't worry too much, they will break apart because obviously we're going to cook them, but it's nice to give them a little start in life, good start. And now I'm going to add the tip that all mothers in the world, I feel, when they cook, give their children, which is what my grandmother and mother taught me, but not the stock part. But when you've got your tomato cans, yeah, yeah. we're gonna rinse them out with a bit of water. Halfway out the cans with water, give it a swill, so you get all that flavor out. And that goes in. And this is to stop, obviously we want the bolognese to thicken nicely. Um, but because we're going to cook it for so long. We also want it not to dry out and burn and stick to the bottom and we are going to try and I think do ours just on the top because why not? So cool. that's the sort of consistency you're now looking for. But that's what we're sort of looking for. It's thickish but it's not, you know, it's Thick. got good colour. It's girthy. You know, the tomatoes are still, you know, there's a big boy. We're going to have a little taste. That's really taste in my face. Mmm, yummy. Mmm, yummy. Mmm, yummy. So that's basically it for now. We're going to leave it bubbling on low heat. We'll give it a stir every now and then so we don't let it stick. Ooh. Keep it moving every, I'd say every half hour, give it a little stir. Um, but yeah, a couple of hours. That's how long I like to right. So we'll see you in a couple of hours. Okay. Hello. So welcome back. We are, we've come back to this situation. This is where our bolognese. Oh. I don't think you're getting the angle right there. Yeah, no, no, I can see So that. it's reduced right down. Look at that. Almost yeah. by a spoon length. And then we've just moved around. It's yummy and thick. So how long has that been on for? That's actually only been an hour and a half. So. Depends on obviously how long you're doing, but this is the sort and of- And you've got all that like sexy on the side, yeah. Got all that sexy on the side. Oh. So what we're now gonna do is put a pan of water on. Yeah. We're gonna taste this when it's a little bit, we're gonna let it cool for a minute. You can now, at this point, at this point, you can let it sit, go totally cold, bolognese and chili, etc. all really, really yummy on a reheat, so freeze this in batches, make a one big batch, do whatever you want to it, make it into a cottage pie. Um, yeah, that's sort of it. So and I then make, so pasta. Yeah, so boiling water, lots of salt. Reason for that is not to season your pasta, it's actually, it makes the pasta not stick together, the saltier the water, as salty as the sea, they say, those oh. Italians. Um, so we'll do that, we'll get some pasta done. Then we'll give this a little blast. Uh, obviously we'll give it a taste for seasoning and we'll also um, make sure that it's really tender, the meat, <sighs> and we can always, we can carry on cooking it for a bit if it's not, but. Tender meat. That's it. First okay. bid done. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye. Bye.